Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, we are going to be talking through a bunch of drugstore hair care products that I have been testing out in the past few months and which of those products ended up being favorites and which ended up being fails. I filmed this video for the first time a few months ago and you guys really loved it and asked if it could be an ongoing series. So this is part two. I'm going to list part one in the description box below if you haven't seen that yet. Definitely check that out after, but we have so many products to get through today. This is going to be a long one. Let's jump right into it. If you hear some noises throughout this video, it is Elsie and her cousin Quincy, my sister's dog playing. Um, they're best friends. They love each other, but they get very rowdy while they play. All right. Not your mother sent me all of their dry shampoos. I mean, a while ago now, and I saw that all of them said that they had a new and <laughs> a new and improved formula and I was confused because I was trying to find out what they changed about it, what they improved about it, and I couldn't find any information. Like when you go to the description of these products on their website, it doesn't say what's new or improved. So through some of my just like brief Google research, I think what this is all about is the fact that they removed benzene from the dry shampoos. I'm sure a lot of you saw this huge dry shampoo recall slash benzene dry shampoo lawsuit that happened was that this winter? I feel like it was a while ago now, but I think a lot of brands have reformulated products based on like potential worry from consumers. So I did have a chance to try all of these out. The original Clean Freak, Texturizing Beach Babe, Bodybuilding Plump for Joy, and Overnight Clean Freak. And I think that they're all great. I still would say that this is definitely one of my all-time favorite drugstore dry shampoos. They're really effective. They don't have too intense of a white cast unless I over apply them. And while they do leave a little bit of residue in the hair, it's nothing, you know, like too overwhelming or uncomfortable that would make me not want to use them. I do have to say, I don't know that I notice really any sort of difference between them. I know that we have like original and texturizing and, you know, bodybuilding, volumizing, but I feel like I get the same results from all of them. And I was looking at the ingredients and they appear to be identical. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. The only one that is actually a little bit different is the Overnight Clean Freak Dry Shampoo. This one has chamomile and sage extract added, but all of the rest, they're the same. I think it kind of just comes down to which scent you prefer. I definitely like the Beach Babe scent the best. It smells like toasted coconut. I'm not the biggest fan of the original, which is supposed to smell like fresh citrus. I just don't love the smell of it. Or the Plump for Joy. This smells like orange mango and I also just am not that into it. So these two are my favorite, but if you're looking for a really good affordable dry shampoo, Not Your Mother's is great. I actually have several Not Your Mother's products, several Not Your Mother's products to review for this video. I was sent all of them in PR kind of over the past several months, just gradually getting more. So let's move on to their newest launch, which is their Tough Love Bonding Range. This system contains a shampoo, a conditioner, an intense bonding treatment. Oh wait, there was one more. Let me go grab that. <laughs> what do we have here? <laughs> okay, you guys are gonna go play out in the living room now because it's just getting a little too noisy. Go on, ye. The last one is the bonding leave-in protector. Let's start off with the shampoo. This one contains gentle cleansing agent, so no sulfates, nothing that I would consider to be deep cleansing or like clarifying. And when it comes to the ingredients that give it that bonding claim, there are two that stand out to me. The first is called, <laughs> I'm gonna struggle with the pronunciation of this. Is it itaconic, itaconic, itaconic acid? We'll go with that. And BIS, B-I-S, for PCA dimethicone. So I wasn't able to find a ton of information on itaconic acid. That was an ingredient that I had never heard of before and never seen used in products. I did find some info, but it's like basically all coming from the manufacturer of that ingredient. So of course we have to take that with a grain of salt, but that is essentially supposed to be something that reacts covalently with the amino groups in our hair and forms modified bonds as a result basically. And it's kind of marketed as a package with the itaconic acid, arginine and pro vitamin B5, which is the same thing as panthenol. And both of those ingredients are in this shampoo as well. So there's a lot of claimed benefits around that ingredient in terms of 
protection, strengthening, etc. I am excited to see more about that ingredient in the future for sure, but I would say as of right now, information is really limited, so we can't really take much of this at face value yet. The consistency of this shampoo is more on the dense side, and I would say it's one of those that is almost like semi-sticky in feel, but it's not something that makes your hair feel sticky at all. And even though this doesn't have any clarifying ingredients, my hair felt perfectly cleansed and refreshed after. Of course, it's not something that would replace a clarifying shampoo for me, but I actually really enjoyed how my hair felt. The conditioner also contains those same exact ingredient highlights, and I actually really enjoyed the actual texture of this one. It just felt cosmetically elegant and elevated for the drugstore. I feel like that's something that I often have issue with when it comes to drugstore conditioners and hair masks. They're just not always the most elevated, but this one feels really nice and soft and silky. And again, I loved how my hair felt when I used it. The intense bonding treatment, interestingly enough, does not contain the itaconic acid, arginine, panthenine, tri panthenine, <laughs> panthenol trio, but it does contain Beast 4 PCA dimethicone, which I forgot to say is a modified silicone silicone and Similar to other modified silicones like this, there's not always much research out there to talk about the benefits, but in general, modified silicones like this are typically used to protect damaged hair. This is also something that I felt was elevated in terms of the texture, and I also loved using this on my hair. I have to say I was very, very pleasantly surprised by this set. I didn't have the highest of expectations, no shade to this brand. I just, I hadn't seen them come out with anything before that was supposed to repair bonds or be strengthening or protecting. So I was like, eh, we've seen brands do this a time or two. I'm sure it's not gonna be anything amazing, but first impression is very impressed. And I have used this a handful of times now. I'll continue to keep you guys posted as I keep using it. And at some point I do plan to do a drugstore bond repair shampoo conditioner set showdown, but I, have a lot of research to do for that video. So stay tuned, but with patience. And then the last ingredient in this set is the leave-in protector. This claims to strengthen, condition, and protect the hair up to 450 degrees. It also does not have the itaconic acid. So I'm wondering if that is really supposed to only be used in rinse off products, but it does have the beast for PCA dimethicone. My God, everything is such a mouthful. A lot of other forms of silicones, quaternary ammonium compounds. And this did an amazing job at detangling my hair, but I have, well, it works there. I have on and off issues with the mister of this, like not quite working for me and squirting the product out irregularly. So I did contact the brand and let them know that this was kind of being funky for me. They are in the process of sending me a new one but I haven't gotten it yet by the time that I am filming this video. So I'll let you know in a future video if that's just like the way this is or if that fixes the problem, because if it fixes it, oops, then that would be amazing. And this is definitely a leave-in conditioner I would recommend. Second to last from Not Your Mother's is their Hydrating Sleep On It Serum Cream. This is supposed to give you softer hair overnight. They say it's a leave-in serum that goes on overnight to work its moisturizing magic on dry locks. This doesn't really have anything super noteworthy for me to call out. They do call out the inclusion of plant-derived squalane and mushroom extract. Why did I not see squalane on this? Maybe it's listed as a different ingredient. I don't know how much mushroom extract is gonna do when it comes to conditioning your hair. And the texture of this is something that is, yeah, like a serum cream. It's lightweight, it feels really nice. And I did actually try applying this on my hair overnight on top of already washed and styled hair. And it did surprisingly make my hair feel nice. I hesitate to do that these days because I feel like I used to really be into that, like piling on hair product and I just usually don't love how that makes my hair feel like the next day or two days later, it feels like I just have too much. This did make my hair feel nice. I would say I still would prefer to use this after washing though, just like as one of the last steps in my wash day routine before oil on my lengths and ends as some extra conditioning. So it's nice. I wouldn't say it's like the most, you know, miraculous product I've ever tried, but not bad. And the last product from Not Your Mother's is actually a scalp and hair sunscreen. This is called the Beach Babe Sunscreen. It's an SPF 30 with chemical filters, including avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. This does have rice bran oil in it, which is nice because I believe, oh, it's not saying here, I believe one of the top ingredients was denatured alcohol. Yeah, that's the first inactive ingredient, which I don't have an issue with in a product like this. It's just really for the purpose of formulating 
formulating this correctly, or not correctly, like in a nice way. So the addition of rice bran oil can help to offset any potential dry feel that that might give your hair. Of course, this is meant for your scalp and the crown of your hair and not the lengths and ends. So that's not a huge concern anyway. This though, I do feel leaves kind of an unpleasant residue in my hair where it's just like a little bit greasy, just feels kind of dirty. I was reading through the reviews to see if anyone else felt that same way. And a lot of people said that this didn't leave any residue in their hair and they really liked the way that it felt. So I had a different experience. Take that for what it's worth. Some people really love the way that it feels in their hair. I feel like it's just something you probably have to try, but if you are looking for a scalp sunscreen, maybe worth testing out for you. Next, I have two products from the brand Ion. This is something that you can find at Sally Beauty. These products are super, ex not, not expensive affordable. This first product is the Smooth Solutions Keratin Replenishing Mist. It's supposed to offer intense hydration, eliminate frizz, and prevent damage. And this has some really nice ingredients, including amodimethicone, hydrolyzed keratin, citric acid higher up on the label. It's not like at the very top, but it's in the middle, which makes me feel like it's not just for buffering purposes. But then again, I'm not a chemist, so. Sweet almond oil and panthenol. And this works great for detangling my hair and conditioning it without leaving it feeling heavy or sticky or anything like that. I really enjoy this as a leave-in conditioner. I think it's a great affordable option. Second from Ion are their silk drops. So these include different forms of silicone, cyclopentasiloxane, dimethicone, and panthenol. And I'm actually gonna put some of this in my hair right now. I think that this is a great leave-in, like finishing oil, styling oil. It's not heavy, it's not sticky. It adds really great shine to the hair. Also smells so good. I like the smell of that. I don't know how I would describe that. Sorry, I know that's not helpful. It's just like maybe a little floral and sweet. It's good. I just feel like the slip that it has is perfect for mid-wash detangling and conditioning purposes. Next up, we have a new launch from Eva NYC. This is their Main Magic 10-in-1 Shine Mask. This is supposed to add two times the shine, reduce frizz, and strengthen the hair. It contains neem seed oil, sunflower seed oil, and argan oil. This is a product that is actually marketed as silicone free. I didn't realize that at first because I don't think it says that anywhere on the packaging. It does, just kidding. And you guys know that that I typically don't end up loving silicone free conditioning products. Silicones just do a great job at conditioning my hair. They're really lightweight. They do everything I need them to do. However, this does have cationic surfactants very high up on the label and cationic surfactants are incredible conditioning ingredients for damaged hair. So I feel like that helped with the results that I got with this. I will say, I just don't feel like this is very cosmetically elegant. Kind of what I was talking about before. It's just like not the most amazing texture. The texture would definitely be better and silkier if it had silicones, just saying. It's definitely very thick as well. So if you have really thin slash fine hair, I don't think that you'll love this. I would go for something lighter weight. However, despite the you know formulation not being the best thing I've ever felt, I do actually feel that this left my hair really nice and soft and perfectly conditioned. So this did end up working well for me. Again, like everything in this video, I have used it several times at this point. It's something that I don't like always want to reach for because of the way it feels and because I have other masks that are really silky and just like drain me to apply but I like the results that I get. If any of you have tried this, let us know in the comments below what your experience has been with it because I'm curious how this works on other people's hair given the texture and everything. Another mask I wanted to try is the OGX Extra Strength Coconut Miracle Oil Hair Mask. I really wanted to try this because of course, as I'm sure most of you know, I am obsessed with the Extra Strength Miracle Oil from OGX. So I was like, ooh, I didn't realize I have a hair mask. It is only, I think, available on places like Amazon. So I don't know if this is something that used to exist. I'm looking quick and has been discontinued. Yeah, I'm seeing it on Amazon, CVS, Walmart. Interesting. This contains coconut oil, of course, and amodimethicone. And this one definitely does have a little bit of a nicer texture than the Eva NYC mask. It's just, yeah, a little bit, that, there's a big hair in there. A little bit nicer to apply. It smells amazing. 
like fresh vanilla coconut. I love it. This is good. I would say I didn't have a bad experience with it. My hair felt good after using it, but I wasn't super blown away by it. It's definitely not the most amazing hair mask I've ever tried, but I don't think you'll hate it if you try it. That's what I have to say. All right, let's move on to a heat protectant. This is the L'Oreal LV Dream Lengths Heat Slayer Pre-Iron Spray. This is a leave-in that offers up to 450 degrees heat protection. It's supposed to reduce frizz and make your hair sleek. This contains a form of amodimethicone that I had never seen before. It's Tridesef 9PG Amodimethicone. So I have no idea how that compares to just like straight up Amodimethicone. I would be curious to know that, but otherwise it contains Camelina Sativa Seed Oil, Arginine, glutamic acid and serine. This is not my favorite for conditioning and detangling. It is very lightweight, but it is a little bit sticky. Like it's the type of thing where I can feel a sticky residue in my hands after I use it. I don't know, similar to the Eva NYC mask, I just found myself not wanting to reach for this after I used it, even though it didn't leave my hair feeling bad or anything like that. I also am just not a fan of the way that this Dream Lengths line smells. I know some people really like it, but it's just not my personal favorite. There's something about it that I'm like, mm, I don't know what it is why I don't love this, but I don't. So all in all, that is kind of a pass for me, but one that I did really love in terms of heat protection and conditioning is the Tresemme Keratin Smooth Heat Protect Spray. This contains amodimethicone, marula oil, argon oil, and hydrolyzed keratin. And it's something that I would say is also lightweight, not quite as lightweight as L'Oreal option, but still does not leave my hair feeling weighed down, does such an amazing job at detangling. This just has like a smell that doesn't bother me. Yeah, I think it smells good. And I feel like my hair just feels great with this. So it's definitely one I'm going to continue using. I am a fan. I actually have two more, no, three more. I lied. Three more in shower products that I'll talk about quickly and then we'll wrap up with the rest of the leave-in products. I did that out of order, I'm sorry. That's really gonna bug me. Why do I have a stripe across my face? The lighting is so weird today. Next is the It's a 10 Scalp Restore Miracle Charcoal Shampoo. This is supposed to help to remove products, build up, hydrate a dry, itchy scalp, detoxify the scalp, soothe and calm, nourish, offer deep cleansing, amongst other benefits. It contains something that they call sea scalp, which is supposed to be a biomarine ingredient. I couldn't find any information on that. I don't really know what that's in reference to. And it also has kaolin, clay, and charcoal. I was very excited to test this out because I was hoping that it would be like a really nice calming, clarifying option, help to relieve itch. But this just didn't really do like a ton for me. It wasn't bad. My hair felt perfectly cleansed after using it, but it definitely got greasy more quickly than it normally does with shampoos that do a really good job of clarifying. This also has a ton of essential oils in it and it smells like straight up mint. Oh, wait, I don't wanna say a ton of essential oils cause I don't actually know if that's correct. I just remember seeing several on the label, peppermint oil, tea tree leaf, spearmint extract. It, it smells so minty. It's definitely like a tingly one. And I have always hated that. I don't know why. I know some people love it. It's just never been my thing, which actually ended up being the reason why I hated this. This is the Nature Lab Tokyo Perfect Clean Scalp Balancing Sake Rinse. This is supposed to restore your scalp natural balance while removing product buildup and impurities for optimal scalp health. It contains sorbitol, apple cider vinegar, rice ferment filtrate, radish root ferment filtrate, and hyaluronic acid, but it also has menthol pretty high up on the label if I am remembering correctly. Yes. And this made my scalp feel like I had dunked it in fire and ice at the same time. Like my scalp was on fire, but like not hot fire, icy fire. And it lasted for a very long time. It was definitely just, it's not for me. My scalp felt really uncomfortable. It didn't last forever. And like once it wore off, I didn't feel that my scalp was like dry or itchy or tight from it. I just didn't like that experience. So if you're into that, then maybe check it out, but it's definitely not for me. I just had a heart attack that my mic wasn't connected, but this is just my battery. We're good. I specifically wanted to include just this conditioner from L'Oreal. It is their Everpure Frizzify conditioner. And I actually tested out a ton of L'Oreal shampoo and conditioner sets. I recently uploaded a video where I reviewed all of them and shared my thoughts on the brand, the different lines they have within the brand. So Everpure 
Pure versus Dream Lengths. I really tested out so many. So I'm gonna list that video below if you want to hear my thoughts on L'Oreal as a brand from the drugstore. But this conditioner in particular stood out to me. It was one that I hadn't tested out before. You guys know I have always been a huge fan of their Bond Strengthening range, but this one makes my hair feel incredible. It contains amyl dimethicone, marula oil, and sunflower seed oil. It's really nice and thick. It feels just super, super conditioning on my hair. And every time I use it, I'm like, dang, my hair feels good. So if you are looking for a conditioner that's not necessarily going to do anything in terms of bond repair, but still be really nice and nourishing and conditioning for your hair, check this one out. I told you guys we had a lot of products in this video. We have a handful left, so I'll try to kind of work through this quickly. Next up is the Nature Lab Tokyo Perfect Clean Style Refresher Spray. I am so sorry if this stripe is distracting you. It's sh distracting me, that's for sure. So this is described as a dual phase liquid mist that was formulated to help quickly clean and refresh sweaty strands while absorbing oils that weigh down styles. This does definitely work to absorb oil, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is going to clean clean your hair. It's not something I would use in place of shampoo and you're still going to want to shampoo after using it and after a sweaty workout. However, the reason this works is because it has denatured alcohol at the very top of the label. So it's just going to help to kind of dry out some of that oil. So I have actually used this several times just in like certain areas that are extra sweaty after a workout if I needed to like run out and go do something in public after. And it does work really well. This is not the only product that exists like this out there. There are others. I feel like Bumble and Bumble is the one that immediately comes to mind. And I'm sure some of you are wondering my thoughts on the use of denatured alcohol on your hair, on your scalp. It's obviously not something that I think, you know, you're gonna want to spray in excess and be using all day, every day. But if you have a situation where you went to a workout class and you're like dripping in sweat and you had happy hour after or something like that, I think something like this can be really helpful and it's totally fine to use infrequently. Another spray that I wanted to test out is the It's a 10 Scalp Restore Miracle Calming Spray. So from the same range as that shampoo, this one is supposed to offer a cool, refreshing sensation, reduce oiliness, reduce scalp itching and flaking, be soothing. And ingredient highlights in this one also include that sea scalp ingredient, whatever that is, red raspberry oil, eucalyptus extract, and panthenol. This also has a lot of essential oils and it's something that definitely irritated my skin, not even just the skin in the spot where I'm prone to seborrheic dermatitis, but like the skin all over my neck. Cause I sprayed it back here. I was feeling a little bit itchy in that spot, which again is where I'm prone to itch. I wanted to see if that helps to relieve it. And it definitely did help to relieve the itch, but the spray of course is like a mist. So some of it got on the back of my neck and the whole back of my neck was like, again, on fire, but icy, icy fire. So I don't know, this one like, yes, did help, but not without some side effects that I didn't love. So it's not something I'll continue to use. If you really love that kind of feel, then go for it. But I would say if you're someone that does have a scalp condition, I would steer clear from really heavily fragranced or essential oiled products like this because they can really trigger irritation. Next up is the Eva NYC Bounce Back Curl Reviving Mist. So this is actually meant for curly hair because it specifically says it's a lightweight mist that reactivates, revives, and redefines your curl pattern. I obviously don't have naturally curly hair, but I wanted to try it on my hair on days when my what are they called? When my heatless curls didn't quite turn out how I wanted them to, and I wanted to still make my hair look presentable so I could film a video, but not have to apply heat to it. So I tried this a few different times on days like that. I feel like I told you guys that recently that my hair's just like not taking to heatless curls in the way that it used to, and I don't know why, but this actually worked great for that purpose. It's super lightweight. It didn't really leave any residue in my hair at all. Not didn't really, it didn't. Like I put my hands in after, I was like, feels great. And I feel like it just helped add some texture back to my hair and kind of like bounce up those curls, even if it didn't look as amazing as like a perfectly executed heatless blowout, let's say. I still really loved the look of it. It was just kind of that like messy, tousled Serena Vanderwoodson look. You know what I mean? Super pretty. So I am definitely going to keep this in my arsenal for days like that when I need some oomph and to revive things. One I was not as much of a fan of is the Heritage by Mindy Sweet Not Salty Sugar Spray. This 
It smells very good. All of their products smell really nice. Oh, I love that smell. This definitely did just leave a little bit of a sticky residue in my hair. It wasn't terrible. So if you're okay with like a little bit of a stick, I will say it did a great job at also adding some texture and volume and just like redefining my look, making it tousled. But when I have a product like that Eva NYC one that doesn't feel sticky or other, you know, sea salt sprays, then that just makes this something that I don't want to continue using. We have made it to the last product in this video. This is the Nature Lab Tokyo Perfect Clean Dry Shampoo, which is a dry shampoo powder. I had the same issue with this that I do other dry shampoo powders where when I try to use this as package, it'll just like shoot that dry shampoo out into one spot cling to that spot and then not be evenly dispersed. And then I'll end up with spots that are kind of hard to rub in and it's just like a whole thing. So I prefer to pump this onto my hand, onto my fingers and then massage that into my scalp. And when I do that, I have to say that I actually think it does a really good job of absorbing oil. It doesn't have that same kind of feel as an aerosol dry shampoo that's really textured and heavily residued. Oh my God, that gave me a heart attack. And something that I noticed about this that I really liked compared to some aerosol dry shampoos is that my hair didn't look as like flat and undimensional and like dry and unshiny, not flat in terms of volume, but like in terms of shine. It didn't do that same kind of thing as other dry shampoos that do a really good job of absorbing oil, but then like also kind of suck the life out of my hair and make it look dry. I felt like my hair just looked more like my hair normally does, but with less oil, which was great. All right, we're gonna wrap up this video here. That's everything I wanted to talk through today. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you're interested in picking up any of these products, as always, I'll have everything listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. Let me know if you decide to pick anything up. Let me know if you have tested any of these products. Did you have the same experience as me, a different experience? Let's chat about drugstore hair care in the comments. Is there anything else from the drugstore that I need to try out and include in my next drugstore faves and fails. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. I'll see you. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Cute boy, Quince of Prince. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, so cute. Bye, everybody. Oh, you're so sweet and cute. Okay, don't lick mommy's lip gloss though, honey. It's not good for you.